Have you ever wondered about the bold headhunters in the dense jungles of Indonesia and how they morphed into the society we see today? Let's journey back in time to the vibrant island of Borneo, home to the Dayak tribe. Now, the Dayak people are an epitome of hospitality and rich cultural heritage, but they once bore a notorious reputation as headhunters. This practice, as chilling as it may sound, was deeply rooted in their religious beliefs and rituals. In essence, it was a testament to a man's prowess, a measure of his power. The more heads a man could claim, the greater his perceived strength and influence. Headhunting wasn't about savagery or violence. Rather, it was a complex social and spiritual system, integral to the fabric of Dayak society. The image of headhunters may evoke a sense of dread, but it's important to understand the context behind these practices. As we delve deeper into the past, we uncover the evolution of these headhunting practices. The transition from being a headhunter to the peaceful tribes we see today was not an overnight process, so, what changed? It was a gradual evolution, a transformation shaped by a myriad of external and internal influences. For centuries, headhunting was an integral part of the tribal societies residing on the Indonesian islands, a practice deeply ingrained in their culture and tradition. But as the winds of change blew, so did the ways of these tribes. The first significant shift came with the arrival of the Dutch colonizers in the late 16th century. The colonizers appalled by the practice took stringent measures to outlaw headhunting. They implemented laws and laid down strict punishments for those caught engaging in the act. The legal pressure from the Dutch made the tribes rethink their ways, and slowly, albeit grudgingly, they began to withdraw from headhunting. Another major influence was the introduction of Christianity in the early 20th century. Missionaries from the West arrived with their teachings of peace and love, concepts that were starkly different from the tribal beliefs. They preached the sanctity of life and the sin of murder, messages that resonated with many tribe members. Over time the teachings of Christianity seeped into the tribal culture, further deterring the tribes from their head-hunting ways. The impact of modernization cannot be overlooked in this transformation. As Indonesia stepped into the modern era, tribal societies were exposed to new ideas and ways of life. Modern education, healthcare and technologies made the tribes realize there were alternatives to their traditional practices, but the tribes didn't let go of their past entirely. They replaced headhunting with symbolic rituals, a way to honor their ancestors while moving forward. These rituals, though devoid of violence, still carry the essence of their past, a testament to their rich and complex history. Indeed, the transformation was a long and intricate process, influenced by various external and internal factors. The tribes of Indonesia today are a far cry from their headhunting ancestors, yet they continue to embody a part of their history, a reminder of their journey from the past to the present. The headhunting past may seem distant and unrelated to the present day, but its legacy continues to shape today's society. This legacy is not just a footnote in the annals of history. It's a living, breathing part of the Indonesian cultural fabric that stretches its influence across various facets of society. Take for instance the local folklore. Tales of headhunters, their valor and their exploits have been passed down through generations, shaping the narrative of the communities. These tales serve as a reminder of the courage, resolve, and strength that once defined these tribes. Moreover, headhunting had a profound impact on the social structures and norms of the time. The practice influenced the hierarchical order within tribes, contributing to a unique social dynamic that continues in various forms today. But the legacy of headhunters isn't just confined to stories and social structures, it also finds a place of honor in museums and cultural festivals. These institutions strive to preserve this unique history, ensuring that future generations understand and respect this integral part of their heritage. Through museum exhibits and cultural festivals the history of headhunters is kept alive, serving as a testament to a time when bravery, honor and respect were earned through feats of courage and strength. Thus, the history of headhunters, although shrouded in mystery and often met with disbelief, is an integral part of Indonesia's rich tapestry. From the dense jungles of Borneo to the bustling cities of Jakarta, the tale of headhunters is a testament to Indonesia's dynamic history. This narrative of transformation, from feared warriors to harmonious members of society, is a compelling facet of Indonesian culture. The remnants of their legacy, though often shrouded in mystery and myth, continue to influence the present. As we tread the path of understanding, we find that the past, no matter how gruesome or unbelievable, shapes the present in ways we often overlook.